Welcome to Tag Team Talk. I am here with my special guest, Bill Mendieta. He is currently starring in the show I Love Lucy live on stage. So, Bill, what can you tell us about the show? First of all, where did it start, where has it been, and where is it going to go next? Uh, the producers had toured the memorabilia of I Love Lucy for the 50th anniversary back in, I think it was 2001. And they toured it all, they recreated the sets, a lot of the props and a lot of the memorabilia. So, and they toured it around so people could actually walk on the sets. And there seemed to be a market for it. Thousands and millions actually went through those things. And then they thought, well, what if we put actors on the stage for this? And so they courted CBS. And uh, eventually, they allowed them the rights to all 179 uh, scripts of the original I Love Lucy show and to see what they would do with it. So we developed it. We chose, at first, one episode and filled it with some live commercials. The concept was going back in time to 1951, and they're the studio audience. CBS, uh, the producers, the investors, they all wanted to see the, the proof of concept. So we did the show in Los Angeles at the Greenway Court Theater on Fairfax. That's where I saw it. That's where you saw it, that's right. So it was sold out instantly, and we had thousands on a waiting list. Wow. People came from, some people came from England to see the show. It turned out to be a, a huge success uh, and a great date night show for uh, for people in town. So there's there was this one couple that, uh, uh, a newlyweds that came from Arizona, and they loved Lucy so much, and they came and they were dressed up as Lucy and 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 Ricky. It was pretty cute. What's the age range of the fans? Very young, five years old, all the way up to grandparents. The scripts are still funny. You had the Ricky Ricardo Orchestra, so you had song and dance, and you had sitcom comedy, and you had some variety. So we get to recreate that. Are you? Attempting to do all episodes, or are you focused on one or two episodes? We have the rights to all 179, but we chose uh, two episodes to do for an evening of a, of a theater show. They were the first series that filmed in front of a live audience. And a little history lesson, why not? <laughs> believe you're here. Yeah, neither can I. I mean, we hitched a ride with Peter the Pyromaniac. I'm looking down over the city lights. Please do not come this year. There's too much yelling at my house. Well, what did you ask Santa for? I asked him not to come. Well, that was stupid. Hey, hey, Ed, it's Santa Claus. I have to swing by on Christmas. That's what I do. Looking around with my head held. The real Santa sent you a real letter? What a crock. Santa doesn't write back. I thought you didn't believe in him. Your son may be a victim of fraud. You told Santa we're yelling? You idiot! We're yelling now! I'm not an idiot! Dear Billy, even though you're my cousin, I think you're a dork, but my dad is making me send you this Christmas card. Maureen. If you peek at this, so help me, I will beat you sterile. Enter swine. I believe in Santa. Oh, I thought you were smarter than that. What are you doing? Maybe Santa's on vacation. If I don't shoot some pool soon, I'll shoot my kids. Daddy, are you trying to find us a new mommy? I'm Edward's teacher at school. My teacher's at my house. This just doesn't happen. Ah! Half a year ago, she was my teacher. This is so weird. If I can't trust these kids, Who's there left to believe, huh? You uh, want me to have the massage guy standing by when you get back? Line him up for tomorrow. I book me to jacuzzi at 2 o'clock. You know, the Grinch has it at 1. Might need some cleaning. Vacation? Me? <laughs> we work around the calendar up here. The wife, the elves, the reindeers. I even keep Bigfoot and the abominable snowman on retainer for special projects. You told a story about mommy to win a prize? Eddie. There's no such thing as Santa. Dear Santa, I want no school forever, no boys except my daddy and Eddie, and a gray rat that doesn't smell. Fake, he calls me. Listen, I don't need this from some punk kid, you know? Don't never go away, Santa. I'll believe in you always because you are the best. Even when I'm all grown up and too old for things like Santa, 
Is this a joke? To the city beyond And I've been doing some thinking On this high level ground And when that sun starts to set I'll be back Inspiration. Inspiration from an old guy With a weight problem who lives in a bad climate. Now what's this? It's a poster. Chicago had offered to produce the show and put it up there, and we used a Chicago cast, but uh, but luckily for me, they didn't find a Ricky and a Lucy, and uh, when we ran there for six six months, eight months. Weren't you doing weird things like like doing the national anthem at football games or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to do the uh, national anthem for the uh, the Chicago Bears and for the Bulls. And, uh, and then since we're doing a national tour now, I, I got to do it for the Washington Nationals over in, in DC. We, the cast, so loved being with each other and playing that we got together and did a cabaret a couple weeks after we closed. You mentioned the national tour. Where are you going? Atlantic City, went to Charlotte, Buffalo, Toronto, going to Boston, Philly, Nashville, Texas, Florida. Seattle. How long in each place? Maybe a week at some places, and then we could be as long as four, five, six weeks. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me by the still waters. He leadeth me the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I feel no evil, for thou art with me. I rod, and my staff that comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemy. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You are a Templar. You are a dangerous man and a trespasser in our land. How often have I told you that it is not safe for a woman out here in the desert? What if these men have been murderers? Where is it you want to be? Jerusalem. Abatza one. And the other was founded to attack the pilgrims and journey to the Holy Land. To Jerusalem. Not to make war. But you do. I'm surprised you survived the battle, Templar. Perhaps it is because you fled. It is not always clear why we fight. But it is not my place to question authority. There is talk in the marketplaces of an assassin. An Ishmaeli Shiite. Salah Hadin is a great warrior. A great leader. He has accomplished what no Muslim has before him. With Allah's blessings, praise be upon him, the compassionate to the merciful. He will drive the Christian devils from this land forever. If Salah Hadin thinks that we fear him, it... No more talking. No more compromises. Let's kill every last one of them. What's this movie I've heard of that you were in called Soldier of God? It was um, a movie about the Crusades, and uh, it's basically a buddy story between a Templar knight and a Muslim assassin who have to find ways to um, collaborate and cooperate so they can survive in the desert and complete their missions. So like enemy mine without the lizard guy. That's right, <laughs> in the desert. Do you kill anybody in the film? Uh, yeah, I'm the assassin, so that's, that's my job, nice, to nice. kill people. Uh, 
I really need some advice. Hell no. I'm afraid of work. We're all afraid of work. That's why we do this. You must get something out of it or you wouldn't do it. We have a situation. I'm at the end of my rope. I could have an attack any second. Can I get a new brother? You can have this one. You were in that movie with Jake Taffeta and the Talking Mouse. They like to fool around with their suits on. Are you involved in a fur triangle? My whole life was flashing before me. It sounds like you're just not truly committed. Lately, I have been doing sensitivity training at the penitentiary. Where does it end? <laughs> uh, uh, I will be keeping my eye on you too. I am a good boyfriend. I'm from Pasadena. Drugs? It's like I was floating for the rest of the day. I'm just gonna be more obnoxious. Why don't you go out and get really drunk or something, you know? Are you gonna throw up? Are you guys reporters? You guys brothers. How do you feel about this man choosing golf over you? <laughs> Whoa! Open your eyes, my child. Who are you? Can you predict the future? I don't like to. Am I going to be waiting around for a husband or what? Aren't there any women without sin? Well, actually, I do know of one. Your mother, right? Then you come up with something. All right, well, how about we just open up the door and let everybody hug you? That's boring! Look, now people are dancing, even my parents! But they're all convulsing in misery. Baloney! I'm not going to cry at any of their funerals either. Would you please turn off that horrible music? You make me want to commit suicide. <gasps> that ought to stir him up. And so anyway, yeah, Soldier of God, that was a... Uh, 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 a really fun film. How I got involved with that, I actually submitted for one role, one of the um, supporting cast of the uh, Knights, but they called me in for the Assassin. And so I felt, the, you know, once you get cast, same thing that happened with uh, when I got cast as, as Ricky, and it's like, oh, they're giving me this responsibility. I have to honor the fans of I Love Lucy, and I, you know, it's like, I better do a, <laughs> I better do a good job. So no pressure, though. No pressure. I had such a fun time researching that, studying it, getting into the uh, not only the time period of the time, um, uh, uh, the cultural um, background of, of that character, his faith. He was of uh, Islam faith, so I got to learn more about that, and it turned out to be really a lot of fun. And how many accents can you do, Bill? It depends on on any given day or how much I'm uh, <laughs> what how much I'm drinking. Bill, I was I was rummaging through your apartment, even though I have absolutely what? no right to do that, and I came across some photos oh, of an old friend. This Audra Barkley Mendieta. <laughs> uh, Audra was my dog of uh, I had her 17 years. She was a great dog, good companion. She's actually been on stage with me. She was a really good companion. She passed away last year, actually while we were doing the uh, Lucy show in Los Angeles. After she left, when I got to the show, they had a nice rose there for her, rose at my station, picture uh, of us, and uh, they had had a donation to the Society Against Cruelty to Animals. They put donations to our vet bills, and they were just really, really sweet and touching. And everyone was crying, or everyone was sad. And then let's go do a happy show. <laughs> and, and the audience really didn't know. So that was kind of cool. We still put on a good show. And Is the show going to San Francisco? Uh, I think eventually, yeah. They're hitting all the major cities. And the producers say they have it booked until through 2015. Because yeah. that's where you're from, isn't it? San Francisco, San Francisco. That's where I grew up. Well, you did some weird movie, Till You Get to... Baraboo. What, what can you tell us about that film? And, and what does that have to do with San Francisco? Did that Absolutely <laughs> nothing. I know. Baraboo is a little town in, uh, what, Wisconsin. Wisconsin. It was uh, derived from a play, if I recall. I know this guy who's got a thing for this girl. You're like a dead fish. I can't help it. But he never did anything about it. We never even kissed. What's the big freaking deal? 
and now she's getting married. Two, three. He's also got a thing for this other girl. I know you love me. But he totally blew it with her. If that's what it takes. Oh my God. He might still have a thing for this other girl, but the timing is all wrong. So this weekend, he's in Las Vegas. This is Vegas, baby. Take a gamble. Getting abused by pretty girls. You're a real pain in the ass. Do you have any his and hers jewelry? Nope. Getting sage wisdom from the delivery man. Storm the altar, slug the best man, do a Sinatra ballad, and kiss her in front of everybody. She'll eat it up. You would do that? Me? No. But you should. Maybe you know this guy. It seems to me like all your actions are geared toward getting me to give you what you want me to give you, which I don't want to give you, but you want me to want to. Was that English? Better than he knows himself. Ah, do not vomit on me. Your imaginary friend is here on the flight. Do you talk often? Can you see him now? What does he look like? She thinks you're wasted. We did it. We did it here and in Las Vegas. And oh, you shot in Las Vegas. <laughs> did you have permission to shoot in Las Vegas? Uh, I don't know. The director said we could, so I, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yes, but isn't it true that you were like, you basically hired a cab driver for like, for like a whole hour and just had him drive around and do shots? Of yes, it? that is true. We did some shots. We did some uh, guerrilla filmmaking without the guerrilla suits. And you were running around hotels shooting. <laughs> running around, around hotels and... Were you there? You know, as a matter of fact, there was, yes. Wow. Uh, well, that's weird. Why do you look familiar? Oh, that was a fun film. Did you enjoy it? Nice, nice cast. Tom Shanley, who was fun to play with. Very good actor. Uh, Jen Siebel. Tell us who Jen Siebel is. She's now the Lieutenant Governor's wife. Uh, uh, Lieutenant Gav Governor of what, Connecticut? Of California. Used to be the, the mayor in San Francisco. That's right. Speaking of, ah, there's the San Francisco I connection. Know. Shooting Till You Get to Barry was fun because we had a great cast. Uh, it was very low budget and guerrilla, guerrilla type. We had you know short hours. We had to get it all in there within, within time and budget. Bill, I'm getting kind of boring right now, so I'm going to bring in a replacement interviewer who's much fresher and much more interesting than I am. Her name is Victoria Stein. Great. So I'm through with you. Sure. Go ahead. So what are you saying? So speed dating. You were in a, a short film <laughs> right. called Speed Dating. I just watched that on the way over here. Um, how how's that experience? Oh, that was fun. That was fun. That was with uh, Amanda Noré, and uh, and she was a kick. Great actress, fun to play with, very pretty, and and that came out of a script called A Timely Maneuver, mm -hmm. and. I think speed dating was a shortened version of that. We shot that in one one evening at a pizza place. So what's it about? Essentially, what's it about? Who were you playing? My Sorry. character was his name Reggie. He was uh, um, he had a, a basically a blind date. Right. Like, so with this with this girl, he comes up there and he puts his timer on and psh, got five minutes. Mm -hmm. And basically, the the premise is it takes five minutes for a girl to decide if. She wants to sleep with somebody. Mm -hmm. He was gonna last five minutes and see if uh, if they're gonna work. Uh -huh. And uh, so, have you ever tried that in real life? Does, what do you think? Is that a thing? Well, I think you I think you know right away if there's chemistry. Yeah. And you know, there's something to that to know yeah. five minutes to either waste your time or not. Clicks or it doesn't click. If there's chemistry there, then yeah. you know, that'll be cool. Hey, Emmett I has know. told me. Briefly about this terrible play that you were in. It was a play. It was an original play that had little vignettes of scenes, and uh, some of it was uh, well written. Some of it needed some work. Santa's letters. I heard about this weird thing called Santa's letters, where you played a ten-year-old boy. How exactly did that happen? Emmett Laverty has all kinds of uh, interesting projects that he's uh, uh, developed and worked on and, and wrote, and, the, and many of them are very charming scripts. This one, one, Santa's Letters, was about this boy who had a pen pal relationship with Santa Claus. So, wow, I heard that the, that the little boy asked Santa Claus not to come. What's yeah. that all about? He didn't want him to come to his family, so, but of course, <laughs> Santa's like, you know, all kids want him to come, so what's wrong with this kid? And we learn through the process that there's some, some family issues, and we got a single parent who's uh, dealing with, a, you know, his, his wife passed away, and he's dealing with raising the kids by himself. The kids are having their, their issues of growing up. He's dealing with a, 
uh, you know, having a crush on a girl in, in school. Uh, the little ten year old kid. crush. Exactly, oh. all those things. Yeah, you yeah. remember those, huh? Oh yeah, like yeah. they were yesterday. When was the last time you wrote a letter to Santa? Wow, that might have been maybe never. <laughs> never, <laughs> never. Uh, I maybe in it. kindergarten, maybe. Okay. <laughs> Come. I'd like to, but uh, I, I think what I need, I, I don't know if you guys can offer. I'm at the end of my rope. I was a crisis line volunteer for four years. Really? Yeah. I'm here to listen. Why so glum, Jum? The end of your rope is kind of an extreme place to be. Well, it's getting to be pretty extreme. I just feel so desperate, so empty. I, I'm beginning to think that maybe I'd be better off dead. So what I hear you saying is that you're considering committing suicide. Hey, crisis line here? I'm not here to judge. I'm only here to listen. Yes, that's okay. So, um, have you thought of a plan? Plan? Have you thought about how you might go about it? You have a gun. Have you been hoarding sleeping pills? Did you buy a one-way bus ticket to the Golden Gate Bridge? Can you get a short feller to tickle a horse's ass with? Anything? Uh, no. Well, are you ill? Like mentally, physically? Terminally? No, I'm not. You've tried this before, though, haven't you? No, never. That's why uh, I can't believe it. Do you live alone? No friends? Actually, I, I live with my brother, and I have a small group of friends. Did you get dumped recently? Uh, you lose your beloved pet ferret? Again, no. Drugs? No, I gave those up. Well, look, buddy, I'm afraid you just don't qualify. Qualify for what? Yeah, qualify for what? For suicide. I don't. Did you go down the checklist? Yeah, he totally flunked. You're just not going to do it. Too bad, man. What checklist? Look, you've got no plan, your motive is weak and flimsy, you've got no track record. But I'm totally bummed out here. It sounds like you're just not truly committed. Look, why don't you go out and get really drunk or something, you know? Get laid, man. Life's a party and you're standing outside the front door sniveling, afraid to go in. I haven't had sex in two months. Two months? That's nothing. Look, maybe after two years you can be a little grouchy, but two months? You know, look, it, it's starting to stack up out there. Would you mind possibly stepping aside and, uh, you know, letting us see some other clients and, you know, come back when you're serious? I'll show you. I'll show all of you. Frickin' wannabes. I don't know, I think we may just have killed him. play about called uh, Beauty, Brains, and Personality. Three, three female best friends, and uh, they, uh, one of them says together they make the perfect woman. One of them has brains, one of them has beauty, and one of them has personality. So she says that out loud to them. Of course, it created a little bit of strife, <laughs> uh -huh. but we got to see their relationship. And with the, this little thing that's uh, at the loud mouth said, who's the beauty? Who's the beauty? That's what, that's the question. <laughs> and, got it. And, uh, and, and apparently that was the one that was the most sensitive, that, that, that issue. And, but then ultimately they see that uh, they are ideally, you know, really good friends and together they're all 
beautiful, they're all smart, and they all have great brains. Oh, these two. Wow. And so who did you play in that? I directed, the, and it was, it was a fun experience. They were really, mm -hmm. really funny. And then after that, I, I said yes to direct uh, other things. I think the thing is, you say yes to some of these opportunities that are out there. So Emmett said, well, do you want to direct this play? All right, yes, why not? Mm -hmm. and, and that'll open up another, another world. And I found, you know, since then, directing some other plays and some, uh, some video projects. And, and now I'm going to be directing a play next spring, uh, a, new, a new work. It's, uh, it's called uh, Pray to Ball. And that's about, um, takes place in college. Mm -hmm. takes place about college basketball. These two hotshot college basketball stars on their way to the pros. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is a year older. is waiting for his best friend to come, come to the school. They'll do one year in college and go straight to the NBA. But um, one of them, the one that just, uh, the freshman, he, his mom passed away, and he's a little bit depressed, looking for meaning. And he looks at religion, and he finds Islam, and he converts to Islam. And that creates a little change in him, a change in their friendship. And it f creates a situation where everybody in that play has to look at themselves and decide who they are. You looking forward to that? I am looking forward to it. It was a, a piece I uh, got after, yeah, after uh, uh, my dog passed away, and uh, I was referred from a friend who said, "Hey, I know this guy is looking for a director for his play." And I said, "Well, let me read it," and I read it, and I I could see what could be done with it. I could see the potential of it, and and it was well written, and that attracted me to it. And it, it spoke about more than just basketball, more than just religion. Yeah. It, was, it was really about identity and who are we, especially as, as college, at a college age, mm -hmm. people, people are finding their identities. Who are they going to be? Like, oh. You know? Oh, I know. <laughs> Can we We're talk? Right in the middle of that. that Great. Identity. Let me interview you. Oh, I'm good. I am good. <laughs> Thank you. But yeah, it's been a great time. i um, glad Emmett got to start off um, with this. That's process. right. And, and I'm glad you got to finish. I got to finish. <laughs> a lot prettier than Emmett. Uh, <laughs> <laughs>